Okay, this is Professor Pelt, and this is part three of chapter two, section five. So if you have higher degrees, such as three, four, five, six, seventh power, keep going up, okay, you can still uh, do factoring. Just look to uh, factor out a common factor prior to actually doing quad form factoring. And then you can also do a mixture of uh, solving methods of isolation and factoring. And you can also just use the square root properties to solve accordingly and mix that in with the uh, zero product rule. So for example, always look to factor out first before factoring. So I'm going to factor this one out. I'm going to factor out a negative one first. So I'm left with, I'm sorry, negative one X because it has a negative one and an X in common here. So if I do that, I'm going to get 3x squared uh, minus, f uh, no, plus 5x plus 2, okay? If there's a negative, you can factor out, always do that. It just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to, but it makes it so much easier. Okay, so now I'm going to use my standard quad form factoring for what's left here. So 3x, 3x divided by 3, all right? 3 times 3 divided by 3 is 3. All right, so 3 times 2 is 6, which is 1 times 6, 2 times 3. So double negative, negative 1, negative 6, negative 2, and negative 3. Okay, what I'm trying to get is a positive 5x, so I need 2 and 3, right? So plus 2, plus 3. Oh, wow, I don't know what happened there. Let's fix that. Okay, so negative 1x times 3x plus 2 times 3x plus 1. Because the 3x and the 3 have a common factor in 3, so that comes out. So now I have a common factors of uh, negative 1x is equal to 0. What's the other one here? 3x plus 2 is equal to 0, and x plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to divide by negative 1. x is 0. There's one answer. I'm going to minus 2, so 3x equals negative 2, and divide by 3. x is equal to negative 2 thirds. There's the second answer. And then minus 1, x is equal to negative 1. I get three answers. You're like, three answers? I'm only getting two in the past. Well, yeah, but this was a third power problem. Okay, and then the last, the other problem, 4x squared plus 1 equals 7, okay? So notice this one only has a singular x term, and it's the, and if I had more than one x here, it'd be fine as long as it's the same exponent, right? So I don't need to factor or factor out here. Just simply use isolation. So 4x squared equals 6. Divide by 4. So x squared is 3 halves, right? So I did... Uh, level order of operations backwards, right? I did level four first, which is adding and subtracting. Then I did level three, which is multiplying and dividing, right? Both multiplied and divided. Then I'll lose level two, which is exponents and radicals. So x equals, right, because we'll square root both sides, plus or minus the square root of three over two. And I get two answers, and it's to the second power, which kind of makes sense, right? So I used a whole bunch of uh, things here. I used the zero product property in the first problem. I used factoring and factoring out. So factor out first before factoring. And the second problem, I just used isolation. All right. Try the student problems for yourself. Okay. So what does the first ones have in common? So if I do this one, always look to factor out first. So I have a 5 and an x squared in common I can factor out, which leaves me with x squared minus, let's see, um, so it's 80 divided by 5, right? So that's what, 16? Okay, so I did factoring out, but this time I'm going to do 5x squared is equal to 0, and x squared minus 16 is equal to 0. So now I can just do isolation. I don't need to do factoring this time. I'm going to do divide by 5. So x squared is 0. Then I'll square root both sides. So x equals plus or minus 0, which isn't 0 in both cases. But we're going to keep the plus or minus just so we can dictate the number of answers. So I'll add 16. 
So x squared equals 16. So I'll square root, and I get x equals the square root of 16, plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus 4. Okay. So sometimes you don't. it's not a matter of factoring out and factoring. It could be factoring out in isolation, as it is in this case. And what you notice is this is fourth power. I got four answers. Because the 0 really counts twice, and the 4 and negative 4 counts two answers also. OK, so the next one. 3 times x uh, minus 4 squared minus 5 is equal to 10. Again, we don't need to factor here either because I have a singular x and I have a sing an x to the s only one ex exponent. If I had x as a different exponent, then I need to do factoring strategy. OK, unless I can, is unless I can do an isolation factoring like I did in the first problem. OK, so I'm going to do isolation strategy. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I have 3 times x minus 4 squared equals 15. So that's level 4, which is adding and subtracting. Properties of equality, what you do to one side, you do to the other. Then I'm going to divide by 3, as it's both multiply and divide. That's level 3 in the order of operations. OK. And then level 2 is exponents and radicals. The way you cancel an exponent is with a radical. So I get x minus 4 equals plus or minus root 5. And then level 1 is grouping symbols. I'm going to add 4. Don't make 9, because that's not 5. That is not 5. Also, that's not 5. That's root 5, which is completely different. It's 4 plus or minus root 5. Okay, So that's the isolation strategy. Some of the common mistakes I see is students will distribute the 3. Right, get 3x minus 12. They're like, well, I want to distribute first. It'll make the problem easier. I'm not going to follow this guy's directions. Well, the order of operations dictates that exponents come before multiply. So if you're distributing, that is multiplying. So you're just not following the order of operations at that point. So that is invalid. So solve and follow the proper order of operations backwards to do the isolation. All right, so Pythagorean theorem. So it's usually a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or you can rearrange it to c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Either way is fine, and it only works on right triangles. So we'll need this uh, to do um, some quadratic work. So what I have here is a missing distance between points a and b. So c squared equals 6 squared plus 8 squared, or 8 squared plus 6 squared. It doesn't really matter. It's just not really an a, b, and c in real life, right? So c equals plus or minus the square root of 36 plus 64, or c equals plus or minus the square root of 100, or c equals, we're just going to put 10, because the reality is we don't need the negative. It's a, it's a real length in this case, so it's just feet, right? But if it wasn't a word problem, you would have to keep the plus or minus. OK, but not everything is as simple as that, because sometimes you have to figure out the missing length OK, so in this case, we don't know. We know the hypotenuse, right? So four, oh, pen didn't work. 41 squared equals uh, 9 squared plus b squared. We're missing one of the sides. We know the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side across from the right angle, right? OK, so I have to think what 41 squared is. That'd be what, uh, 1,681 equals 81 plus b squared, right? So we'll subtract 81. So 1,600 equals b squared. So think about this. b squared equals 1,600. So b equals plus or minus the square root of 1,600, correct? But again, you have to think that this is a real measure, so the negative one doesn't really count in this case. So it's just b equals uh, the 40, and this isn't what this is in feet also actually. Okay, pause the video. Try this two student problems for yourself. Okay, so for the golf problem, we are in yards here. We don't know the hypotenuse, so. <laughs> we'll call that C. You can call it anything you want, though. You don't need to use A, B, and C. So 165 squared plus 220 squared are the two lengths. And the order of those doesn't matter, really, right? So 165 squared is, what, 27,225. And 220 squared is, what, 48,400. 
So C equals plus or minus the square root of those two together. So plus 27,225 is going to give me 75,625, right? And you can break that down if you want. Either way, it's going to be a positive answer in uh, yards, right? So if you did the, the, the factor tree of that, breaking that all down, what you essentially would get, right? Square root seven, five, six, two, five, broken down is 275. So it actually works out perfectly. That's interesting. Two seventy five. Okay. Two hundred seventy five. That doesn't always work out perfectly, but that's fine. That's what I can't do it in my head. Okay, so next one here, we're missing a, one of the lengths. Uh, you can call it A, B, or C, doesn't really matter. So we have 110 squared equals 46 squared plus, we'll call that A squared this time, I guess. It doesn't really matter what you call it, though, right? So if we do the 110 squared, you get uh, 1,210. No, 12,100. Sorry, 46 squared equals 2116. Okay, that's a plus. No. Sorry, that's a plus. Okay, so if I take 2100 and minus 2116, I'm going to get 9984 equals a squared. And is that square rootable? 9984 uh, is not square rootable. So a equals plus or minus the square root of 9984. So a is equal to the positive number of inches, right? So since that's not a perfect square, let me think here, 46, 12, 100. Okay, so we can use my other one to cheat real quick to get you the idea. If I went, for, I don't want to do the factor tree. It'll take too long for the sake of the lesson. So if I do the square root of 9984, it becomes 16 and then 39. Okay, so 16. And then root 39, essentially. So if we did the factor tree and took all the commons, you get a whole bunch of twos out of there. But we're not going to spend that kind of time. All right, that is the end of part three.